In this video I'm going to show how you can display the current time in a TK Inter window using the Python programming language. And the information gleaned in this video will be used in the next video to build a digital clock in TK Inter using Python. Before I consider the graphical user interface for the program I wish to develop in this video, I want to look at this simple computer program here, which will allow us to consider what this method is responsible for doing. If you consider this program, you can see here that I'm importing the time module and I'm importing it in a way that means I will have to use this TM here in the same way as I use TK when I import TK Inter. It helps avoid naming conflicts. If we look to this line you can see I've had to use the TM here then I use the dot because we're dealing with dot notation and then we have this method. Now what this method is going to do is going to read the system clock i.e. what time it is what the current time is and it's going to return it in a particular format governed by this string and this string is effectively passed to this method and the method will read the clock and return it as a string in a particular format so that's what we're going to have a look at here now when this gets the string it's going to assign it to this variable so when this line executes this is the name that's going to be bound to a string that reflects the current time that invoking this method gives us and then here we're simply going to print the current time i.e. what the time is is output the string is output now i'm going to show this schematically in the following diagram let's consider this diagram here and this is representing the method that appears here in the code and we can see i have an arrow going in and an arrow going out if we look at this method you can see here that i'm passing in this string so i am showing the string appearing here and of course that's going to be passed into the method now the method once it's called will read the system clock and it'll work with the string that's just been passed to it to work work out an appropriate string for displaying the time and the string it gives us is the following and you can see that is 4 minutes and 29 seconds past 7 o'clock in the evening the 1900 is obviously 7 o'clock in the evening because we're looking at a 24 hour clock now this string is bound to current underscore time because current underscore time was here in the code so we can see that this is bound to the string that this returns and this what this bit of the animation is showing us and then of course here what we're going to do is to print the current time and this therefore will be printed onto the output as you can see here so you can see we have 190429 output let's uh, consider the string and how this has been responsible for giving us the output format that we see well you can see at both ends we have the quote telling us that this is a string then we have the percentage sign and the h and that means that in this position we're going to have the hours return h standing for hours now there's no percentage in the output the percentage h tells us that in this position we want the hours then we have this now this colon is placed here directly as you can see in the output and we can see it here in the string that left the method then we come to this and this is saying in this position give me the minutes of the time that we've just found and of course that was 04 which you can see here and of course that then get printed in the output now this is the colon which we can see is put here in the string which we then can see here printed in the output and this well that means the seconds the percentage s means seconds so we can see we have this 29 seconds and that appears here so the percentage h the percentage m and the percentage s they will be dependent upon the current time that's read by this method and these two colons will appear as you see here and here before I move on, if you consider this time here, you can see it is a 24 hour clock. Now, what we can do, I can go to here and I can replace this percentage H with percentage I and we'll get the time displayed as a 12 hour clock. 
So here you can see I've altered the program by putting percentage I here. And if we go and have a look at the schematic diagram again, you can see I'm going to put this string here, and that's going to be passed into this method. The method will read the system clock, get the time, and now it'll format that time and give us an output as shown here. 7 hours, 10 minutes six seconds so we can see we have the colons here and of course they are put there because we have the colons here as you can see now naturally this string is now going to be bound to the name current time because here we're getting the time and formatting it with this method working with this as its input and it's assigning that to this so current time becomes the name bound to what this returns and of course what this is going to do is to print that current time and we can see the time is here the first thing we need to ask ourselves is this seven in the morning or is this seven in the evening well, there's no way of telling from that other than looking outside the window, I presume, and working out where the sun is and realising what time of day it is. Now, to avoid us having to look out the window to work out what time of day it is, either morning or night, we can do this instead. We can put a percentage P here. And let's see what that does for us. Well, here we can see the schematic diagram. We're now passing in this string, which you can see has got the percentage P. And when that goes into the method, the method reads the time and it works on the string that was passed to it to decide how it is going to format its output. And it outputs this. And you can see it puts here PM. Now that tells it it's seven in the evening. Now, of course, this string is bound to the current time. And then when we come on to this this line when we print that output and you can see it's 7 hours 22 minutes 12 seconds and this tells us it's p.m. which means it's the evening let's consider the execution of this program if we were to run it in the morning and let's consider the schematic diagram again which you can see here and we know we're going to be passing this string to it so let's see that string going in now this method will now read the current time it'll work on what's just been passed to it to decide how it's going to format its output and of course here we can see the output and you can see that it's 14 seconds 32 minutes past nine and if you look at this we now have AM here telling us we're dealing with 9 in the morning. And of course, this string will be bound to the variable name current underscore time. And this line here will print that out to the screen, as you can see here. And there is the AM telling us that this is 14 seconds, 32 minutes past 9 o'clock, in this case, in the morning. We're now going to consider this computer program and you can see here that I'm importing TK enter. Here I'm importing time again. Now this line will create an instance of the window and what this line will do, it'll set the title of that window to current time. And here you can see we have the line of code that we've already considered in some detail in this video. Now when we come here, what we're doing, we're creating an instance of a label and that instance is going to be bound to this name which is clock underscore label and this is going to display the time for us and we can see we're passing in this here my underscore window which means that the label we're creating is going to be associated with the window we created on this line now here we're going to make the label font Arial 80 and that's quite a big size so we'll see what that gives us we're going to make the background color of the label black we're going to make the foreground color red which means the text will appear in red and here the text that is going to be displayed in the label is what this name is bound to and of course this name is bound to the string that was returned here because we can say that this goes and gets the current time in a appropriate format and assigns it to here so current time is bound to the string that is passed to text as shown by this then what i'm doing i'm saying right well i'm going to take the label that's just been created and i'm going to use the grid method to place it in row zero column zero and then of course the program because we're now dealing with the graphical user interface goes into the main loop so if we look at what this program gives us when it executes it gives us this there you can see current time which was set here 
here you can see we have the label inside the window where the window was created on this line and if we have a look at the label we can see that its background is black and we can see the foreground color of the label is red because that's the color that text appears in it appears as red and of course this is 9 hours 37 minutes 34 seconds of course looking at the time with no real way of knowing whether we're dealing with a 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock but if I now run the program again and this time I run the program in the evening what we're going to get as the output is shown here because that's the time I run the program and we can see that 6 seconds 30 minutes past 1800 hours which is 6 o'clock in the evening the same things happened this creates the window this set this to current time this goes and gets the time returning it in the string format you see displayed here this creates the label and we know it's going to be associated with this window this sets the size of the font and the type of the font in this case Arial. we have the background color black we have the foreground color red which is going to be the color of the red text and what this is doing it is getting the string that was created on this line and assigned to here and it's putting it to the text property of the label consequently we see in here 18306 and this obviously is responsible for putting the label within the window and then we enter the main loop now clearly this is a 24 hour clock but if we go back and have a look at this, there's no way we know whether that's 9 in the morning or 9 in the evening. So let's revisit this string that we're passing into the method. And to ensure that I can work out what the time is in terms of whether it's morning or afternoon or evening, we can simply do the following. I can change this string as shown by the line of program bouncing in now. And here you can see I've simply added percentage P to the string. So when this program executes, we can see we get this. And here you can see we've got the AM telling us that we're dealing with the time in the morning. And of course, if I was to run the program again in the evening, then the AM would be replaced by PM. So this computer program, every time we run it, will give us the current time. Now, in truth, it's not a lot of use, this, is it? What I really need to be able to do is to get the graphical user interface to display the current time frequently to give the impression that we have a digital clock. And that's what the next video is going to be about. How do I alter the program you see here in such a way that it turns it from something that displays the current time to a digital clock that continually updates the current time as all clocks do check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video